shy, so I cannot speak with so much light. Thank you. Well, it's a honor for me to be here, and thanks to the Architectural League and to the Cooper Union University. So I will show many, many pictures in a kind of MTV show, because there are many. That was my last work last year in China. I was part of a team who built the Indian Pavilion at Expo Shanghai. They hired me to do a kind of decorative work with bamboo. So I convinced the Indians and also the Chinese authorities to allow me to build it completely in bamboo as a structural material. They were very scared because millions of people were going to visit that structure and they have a big responsibility. I showed them some work I have done before in China, which was a bridge, I will show it later, and the main authority of the Chinese to give the building permit, he was very enthusiastic about the bamboo idea, so he took the risk to allow us to build that big bamboo structure. But this is a computer drawing that I never do, but I have a caution to make them for me. <laughs> I, I work in a, in a, with a paper and a, I work by hand, so now I am starting to be required to do those computer drawings. That is a very big bus station to be built in Cali. Last year, they were going to ban the use of bamboo. It was going to be prohibited in the new building code of Colombia. Our engineers, they just copied the building code from Los Angeles. And since in Los Angeles there is no bamboo, so they decided to say it's not allowed to build in bamboo in Colombia. So I spoke with the president of Colombia, Alvaro Uribe, and he called the minister of in charge of that regulation, and in front of me, he asked to stop that law and to add a new chapter about building with bamboo in the new building code. So that was a big help, and after that new building code, I am allowed to do that kind of governmental works. This is a bridge to be built in steel pipes and bamboo. I have always to say I am not a bamboo architect. I also work with bamboo. And I have worked so much with bamboo that I am getting tired of so much bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> but I will keep working with, with bamboo. So this is a very big bamboo structure. It's 20,000 square meters, and for my standard, it's a huge project. Very soon it will be built. So those are computer drawings. So this is a watchtower I built many years ago in the, near the area where I was born. It's mangrove and bamboo. This is another computer drawing for a work I was going to build in Amsterdam. But I was getting crazy trying to get the building permit. It was asked to me by the mayor of Amsterdam. So that was last year that I was awarded with the Prince Klaus Award that was the husband of the Queen of, of the Netherlands. So because of that award, I had the chance to talk to the President of Colombia about the building code. And because of that award, also, the Chinese were very impressed, so they allowed me to build that bamboo structure in, in Shanghai. So that kind of prestige and award, they help a lot for that kind of alternative materials. That is the kind of drawings I do that was a temporary uh, structure to be built in, in Mexico City, in the Socal, which is one of the biggest squares in the world. That, that work was done before by Shigeru Ban, and she was a graduated architect from this university. I really appreciate his work, so, but for some reason, he fight with the artist in charge of that exhibition, so this artist hired me to do the next exhibition that it, it was this. So it was with hanging pillars, Well, you will see later the picture. That is a bamboo house I built in, in Brazil. It was my very first living grass roof. Uh, about eight years ago I was in Norway and I had the opportunity to see living grass roofs in Norway. And they do that to be protected against the cold. And 
in the tropical weather like Brazil, it's a very good isolation material for the hot weather. This is the same house, built it with Asian bamboo, not with, um, not with South American bamboo. This is a governmental building in Colombia, a, very, a house in a very cold weather. My very first bamboo structure, when I was just starting to discover how to build with bamboo. That was about 30 years ago, and I discovered a client asked me if you have to build for me a bamboo structure. So I started to work with my worker to try to discover how to work with that hollow material. So for some reason I discovered something very simple that was to put semen mortar inside the hollow bamboo. And after that small and very stupid discovery, I was allowed to start to build very big bamboo structures, but I started step by step. And I have been, like, some of my structures have collapsed, and they have collapsed because of my fault. So I, I always say you need to hire an engineer, because it's better to have the engineer in jail and not the architect. <laughs> and this is not a joke. We can, we can kill people by doing the structures. It's, it's very important to have responsibility in that kind of work. So that was my very first bamboo structure after I discovered how to do cantilevers or big overhangs. So in the upper part of the roof, there is a tension strength. So I have iron straps, I have bolts, knots, but cement mortar inside the hollow bamboo, so that makes the joiner and this. And whatever an engineer has to do when they do numbers for that structure is to understand what is the strength of the iron element. The strength of the bamboo used to be much higher than the iron elements that we use to do the connections. This is one of the many country houses I have built using thick wood, water, which is our local bamboo, and concrete. That has been my only experience doing very poor people houses. So in Colombia, the poor people, they really hate bamboo because it has the meaning of poverty. And the only way to convince the poor people to build out of bamboo is by doing rich people houses. So that was possible to be built because next to that, 200 meters from that, is a golf course that I built 20 years ago and it has big bamboo structures and very rich people bamboo houses. <laughs> and I think I have the record of the lowest cost ever built for a, for a small house in Colombia. And I refuse to use zinc or asbestos cementos in the roof. I use handmade clay tiles. That is the way to build it. It's expanded metal, bamboo structure, and a very simple foundation because what we are doing is a kind of a big basket. So those materials are not uh, seismic resistance. They are seismic indifference. That was a project in China that I did with Edward Stones at, and Associates. So I was part of a team of architects and I was in charge of the many bamboo structures that were built there. This is a corridor that has about one kilometer long, connecting the different Cabins. That was the bridge under construction in the main entrance. I, I, I took four Colombian workers that have worked with me since ever. And with a tourist visa of 20 days, they stayed for two years in China. So <laughs> I wanted to take them back again to Shanghai for that expo, but they were already like terrorists in the immigrant list. <laughs> So this, this was a hotel built in a big bamboo forest. So all the bamboos we used were, not one of them were more far than 50 meters. That was the bridge inside. That was a watchtower. <coughs> that was the bridge and the hotel under construction. The, the most important man of the team for that hotel was the expert in Feng Shui. I don't believe in those things, but I had never any problem with the Feng Shui because everything I design is symmetry. So Feng Shui loves symmetry, so I don't have any conflict with the Feng Shui expert. 
that was the loading test for the bridge. Since there is not bamboo engineering there, I suggested them to do a loading test before opening the bridge. So here we they put, because I was not the designer of the loading test, they put 400 kilograms per square meter. That is the equivalent of seven persons per square meter. So it was a very strong load test. And the results were incredible. The engineers in charge of that, they couldn't believe it. That was a house I built in Panama some years ago using bamboo and local woods. This is a very important detail that we call protection by design. If you want a building to last forever, you take care to have the wood far from the moisture. So that's why I use that rolling stone and that cast iron element in the bottom of the pillars. With that kind of detail, you, you, you can keep the building staying in good condition for a very long time. That was the social housing project without cement mortar inside, but it's very easy to do this cement mortar and it is, it is not expensive. It was done. We took the picture when it was under construction. This is a small train station in Panama. That was a temporary church I built in Colombia for the Catholic Church to replace, to replace the cathedral that was heavily damaged by a strong earthquake. So we, it took us one month to build that, and it was going to be a temporary structure for six months. But it stayed there for one and a half year, and everybody was asking to keep it, but it was built in a very ordinary way, in a very poor way. So it was not treated against box, so it was getting eaten by the box. That was a big structure I built for Carrefour that they wanted to do something environmentally friendly, so that's why that they asked me to do that in bamboo. This is a kind of roof I do frequently. In the tropics, we need big overhangs to have a shade around the building. So this is almost eight meter in overhang. The same house, but many, many times they have built this kind of overhangs. This is the interior roof. That was the project in Mexico. That was designed before by Shigeru One with containers. Here, I keep some of the containers to keep the memory of the project. Of the project. But it was a huge bamboo structure. It was 5,000 square meters. That is a computer drawing because I was never happy with the results of the of the Indian Pavilion at Expo Shanghai. So I convinced a mayor of a small city in Colombia to allow me to build that structure again, but being designed by me alone from the foundation. This is a structure I have built many times that is for horses. Our sacred animal in Colombia is the horse. That was the drawing for the hanging pillars of the Mexico Pavilion of the Nomadic Museum exhibition. That was a loading test for the Nomadic Museum that was going to be built in Brazil, in Sao Paulo. So again, the local authorities, they were asking for the, for the engineering of that bamboo structure. So we don't have that engineer that, they, that take the responsibility to sign a document saying that the structure is okay. So we built in real scale 25 meter span, and the, log, the engineers from Sao Paulo, they went to Colombia and they did themselves their own loading test. And we were doing that loading test and there was a kind of strong earthquake in that day, so we, we didn't have to do the horizontal loading test that it is the most difficult one. <laughs> that is uh, my new good friend, Ricardo Legorreta, and he's the most important living architect in Mexico. So he saw my work in El Zócalo in Mexico, so he decided to go to Colombia to visit my bamboo structures. And we have the idea to build someday a house between us. So he told me I am a 
walls architect and you, you are a roof architect, so we have to build the house together. That was the exhibition of the Nomadic Museum in Mexico, and it keeps some kind of memory of the Shigeru One project. And there you can see the hanging pillars. In the Shigeru One project, they were uh, cardboard pillars. Here you can see the, the pillar, they don't touch the ground, they are hanging. But they are not that fake pillar because they have the big work to keep the building in position. The roof is so light that if there is a strong wind, it will be flying through the square. That is a church I built with some other friends in a farm we have it near Cartagena. After it was demolished, the one in, in, in Pereira, the Catholic one, we decided to build one church without religion, so it's open to any kind of ritual things. That was the Indian pavilion at Expo Shanghai. It was very difficult to take that picture because the interior design and the landscape and everything was so ugly that it was really a shock for me to be involved in that project. But this is one of the many bamboo houses I have built. Uh, a very big house I built many years ago using, using mango. You don't kill the forest or map, you just use a resort that if you don't do a clear cut in the forest, nothing happens. It, it helps for the forest to do some kind of, of rational cutting of the wood. That is the same house, has a very big span inside. That is a house I finished one month ago. It's not a bamboo house, it is eucalyptus and local hardwoods that we planted hundreds, not hundreds, thousands of trees to replace the one we turned down. That is again the protection by design factor. I never allowed the wood to touch the ground. This is a kiosk that I have built. Many, many different kinds of kiosks now, and I enjoy a lot of doing that kind of little kiosks. It's a gate entrance to a golf club near the social housing project. Those are the doors of the very last house I have just finished. We built them with, with big trees, but they were already old trees, so there is a cycle of a tree that it, was, it gets born, and then it gets mature, and then it dies. And it is kind of criminal. It's kind of criminal to allow the tree to get die because it liberates again the CO2 that has captured during his life. That is a structure I am just building right now. I took that picture two weeks ago. It's a big building for office in a palm oil plantation in a very hot climate in Colombia. It's eucalyptus and bamboo guada. That is at the top of a 21-story building, Plantani Bogotá. I am using here steel pipes and, and bamboo guada. That is the office building for that palm oil plantation. So I need very skillful workers to do that kind of work. And in the poor countries like Colombia, the labor is so skilled. And they are so such a good worker that without them, it would be impossible for me to build that kind of structure. That is the joinery I use sometimes. This is cast aluminum. That is another big house we built recently. And half of the house is for the horses and the other half is for the owner. So again, eight meters overhang for cantilevers. This is a garage of that house. So you can arrive drunk without any pillars. <laughs> I am always doing that kind of roof. This is an old colonial house in Villa de Leyva, which is a colonial Spanish house in, in Colombia. And I am just copying that very old tradition of making roof. The Spanish name for that structure is Par Inudillo. And every structure I have ever built is about that kind of traditional architecture. That 
still the kind of drawings I do for my workers. Those are technical drawings and they really understand what it is drawn there because of the colors. This is the only drawing I need to build that big dome that we are just going to start in Colombia. But now I'm not allowed to work with this kind of, of simple drawings. So I have to hire young architects now to do the computer drawing that I don't need them at all. <laughs> with this information, it's enough. I can build that structure without any other drawing. All the information you need to build that is already there. But this is the plan. This is another one of the many houses I have built. This is a house I have just finished one month ago, and that is for the cows, not for the horses. Very expensive cows. <laughs> this is again another drawing, a technical draw that is enough for me to build that kind of structure. And that is the final structure already built near Manizales. This is built at almost 4,000 meters above this level. That is the palm oil structure. It's a picture taken one week ago. This is one of the many little work I am always doing. This is ramp earth, steel pipes, and you can see the bamboo roof structure on top. The new building code don't allow to build with ground earth in Colombia. But this is not doing any structural work. That is a house I built for an artist. He's a very important artist in Colombia from a pure Indian. Not Indian from India country, but Indian from south of Colombia, from the Inca Empire origin. So he, he hired me to build his house. And he told me, I come from the jungle. I hate wood, I hate bamboo, I want a concrete house. So this wood you see in the stairs is not, is not doing structural work. It's just, the, it's just the surface of wood. And I did a railing out of rebar. Someday I will be well known, not because of my bamboo work, but because of my rebar work. <laughs> that was the loading test for the Mexico structure. That was 18 meter span, much smaller than the one that was going to be built in Sao Paulo. And again, since there is not bamboo engineering, those building, those loading tests are very important because it's not an intellectual work, it's a real work. That was the Carrefour project, it's 16 meter by 16, the cement mortar and clay tile on top. And the load of that kind of roof is 225 kilograms per square meter, that is quite heavy. And every time that I do bamboo structure, I like to, to do very heavy roof because it's the best way to be safe from the strong winds. But you better get an engineer to go to jail, not you. <laughs> that was a house under construction. Half of the house is for the horses, the other half is for the social activities of the house. It's in a very hot weather, and there's a lot of concrete involved, but it is a very big bamboo roof. That is the garage. That is a water tank that I built south of Colombia many years ago using mangrove, and there is bamboo on top of the roof. But this is a concrete, solid concrete water tank. Another stair made out of rebar in, uh, in the old part of Bogotá. The roof is a bamboo structure also. That is in the top of that very ugly modern building using steel and bamboo. That is a bridge I built 10 years ago. It's a pedestrian bridge. It has 46 meter span. And we had huge trouble with the foundation. I was not involved in the foundation, so I had to take out a big load from the, from the bed. Well, I had to, to, to take out 40, 80 tons. I took out the clay tiles and I took out the concrete surface for walking. That is that bridge. Another house in a very cold weather. 
using kind of basket weaving material for the ceiling. Same house. This is again the railing of that rebar stairs. This is one of the many structures I have built for horses. So it's an eight meter span and four and a half meter in overhang. This is another structure to watch the horses in the shade and it is steel pipes and bamboo. This is to work the cows and to make a shade for the cowboys that are working with the cows. That is the church that I built in the farm with my partners to be a, a, a non-religious church. Those pictures were taken one week ago. That is the area where we have the horses and the cows. This is another kiosk near Cartagena. I am always doing that kind of, of small kiosk. Well, this is not small, but it's not big. It's in between. It's a hotel near Cartagena. Another of the many, many different kiosks I have built. That is the governmental building in charge of the environmental things around that area of Colombia. Those are the bamboo rices that I like to work with them. It's not way to cool that bamboo, but the rice is already cool in a natural way. That was the pavilion we built in Germany for Expo Hanover, and we built that structure in real size to do the loading test. The one in Hanover can't exist anymore, but this one is still is still doing good work in Colombia. They do exhibitions, performance, parties, everything. They use that a lot. Here I use it also the rhizomes to do the court. And exactly that structure was built after this prototype was built, it was built in Germany, and again in Germany there was done a building, a loading test before opening the building to the public. And this is my house in Colombia. I have a very close friend who do that kind of furniture using the rhizomes and the strange wood we have there. One of the many houses I have built using bamboo, big overhangs, one of those houses, another house using bamboo structure. Those are eight meter overhang. This is the very last house I have finished. And that picture was taken one week ago. That will be a water garden. We don't have the plants yet because the water gets too alkaline. So we have to wait sometimes after the water is in good condition to provide the nutrients to the plants. It is built in a very hot weather. So it's concrete and wood, many different kinds of woods. Those are the doors, the structure, the, the, the part to cast the concrete. One of the many houses I have built. This is a small kiosk using the rhizomes of the quadra that is a very expressive material. Another huge bamboo roof in a golf course condominium. Another of the kiosks. Another kiosk. That is the house I have just finished. Those are the rebar stairs. Kitchen, the rebar stair. The stones are fossils. If you open them, there is a fossil inside each stone. 